The topic of the week this week is difficulty versus accessibility in games. We're kind of talking about the handholding that you might see pretty often in or games. There. Or maybe lack thereof, but I feel like that's a little bit of a response yes. to the handhold. Yes. Uh, I think obviously we're talking about Demon Souls, Dark Souls, right. which kind of started this trend um, that I don't think anyone saw coming. Right. Uh, just kind of happened. Uh, they decided to make a very difficult old school game, and people grabbed onto that because right. they hadn't seen it in so long. So I mean, one of the things that brought I thought this was, I thought our conversation we had when we were playing Brothers is what brought up this topic. But you were saying something that Mark had. Yes. Yeah. You know, so I, I'll bring up that at first. You know, when we were playing Brothers, I was saying it was getting annoyed. It was kind of interesting how you know we were playing this game and I we went on the hang gliding part or whatever. Yep. And I was saying it was kind of annoying that you know I didn't know I had to do this and this. And then when I thought about you know after about 20 seconds, I was like, wait a minute, do I really need to be shown that? You know, I remember games that you know I would play forever that I didn't know how to do something you know for days on end, and I finally figured it out. There was no you know explanation of oh you have to do this to do this. Yep. And now you have games like I remember when I was playing Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Yeah. I couldn't play. I couldn't finish it. I had to stop because it was telling me how to do everything. Yep. It was there was no game to it. It was almost like reading a game. Yeah, it was all. I feel I feel like a different example of this is actually Final Fantasy XIII. Okay. Now they were trying to. Uh, the game wasn't like overly difficult, and they weren't trying to handhold you for that reason. Right. Uh, it's just like it, these games have large battle systems. Right. They're, they're very involved. It took 25 hours for the full battle system to come available. Yeah, yeah, right. The first 25 hours of that game <laughs> are a tutorial. Yeah. The entire first 25 hours. Up until hours. you get to the open field. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. That's where you finally have freedom to use all your party members, to use all the abilities that, that right. have been taught to you for the first 25 hours. This could be done. Could have been done in five hours. Like, you think so? Yes, easily. Anyone who plays Final Fantasy could have had this done in five hours. The problem is that they were trying to market this game to people that had not played Final Fantasy. They right. were doing this whole Western marketing thing, trying to get hold of people that... Well, Lightning is the best character ever developed for a Final Fantasy game. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of sad that Japan actually has their own top of the list, pretty much. Uh, they really like Lightning over there. Um, I... I like Lightning too. Uh, she just she's a little monotone, and, and for, she didn't deserve three games for sure. Um, but that's not my problem with Final Fantasy XIII. The problem is that it takes 25 hours to really get going. Um, I, I enjoyed the first 25 hours. I'm right. not saying I didn't. It's just it felt like it was res in restraint mode the entire way through. It's like mm -hmm. I can do this, guys. Like, right. give me the things I want to use. Like, why am I like right. waiting for this to come? Like, it, it just it was really frustrating to someone who's played the series from the beginning. Um, so I feel like that's part of it. I feel like this difficulty versus accessibility has a lot to do with trying to get games in the hands of people that don't typically play these types of games, which is unfortunate to people like us right. who just want to play the game. Right. Like, you know, right. it's like this, these are these are people that love your games. Like, you should be catering to us more than anyone else. So maybe the solution is they need to figure out a way to do both at the same time. There's an easy way solution. Yes. Yeah. And it's called difficulty modes. Yes. And you have one that's the hardest difficulty. Yeah. You know, usually the extreme, the one that they don't recommend unless you've yeah. beaten the game already. The hard difficulty, which is normally what you want to play, you know, in order to get the full true experience. The yeah. normal, which is what I end up usually playing, yeah. just so I can experience it in a good amount of time. Yeah. Easy, and then hand-holding your bitch way. Yeah. Which is, and some of these games do this. I don't want to say that they don't. But um, there's not enough. They're, they're, a really cool thing that I, I haven't seen personally, that I'm sure has happened before, is having so that the tutorial mode is only in easy mode. Yes. If you're on normal or above, they don't do any tutorial, <laughs> or maybe they do less tutorial or something like that. Uh, maybe it even says like as a caption below, hard mode. This mode has no tutorial. You know what I mean? Like there is no. Uh, help mode. There's there's nothing to describe the functions of the battle system. You are figuring this out on your own. A good example of that is Don't Starve, which some people have a problem with, and I love. I love that you're thrown into that world, right. have no explanation on what to do, no idea on what makes this or what makes that or or where to go for this item or that item or how this item is made. It's just die, relearn, die, trial error over and over again. Uh, you know, until you get to day 50 and die, and then try again. You know, like, it's just, right. that's, that's the essence of that game. Dark Souls is another kind of similar comparison to that. Minecraft is a little bit of that either. Minecraft, which is, um, which, you know what, and that's really weird to me, because you have all these, you know, things saying, why, you know, we have to hold, hand hold all these kids, we have to show them how to do these games, especially that Mario and Luigi one. Man, that really pissed me off so much. But then you have games like Minecraft, which is, 
blowing up for all kids, all young kids, and they're getting the hang of it really easily. So obviously you don't have to hold your hands. No. You don't have to do it. No. They just feel like they want to because we won't understand it. You know, we're not stupid. Chris is a sad man. It's just your little, little face up off. Do you want to uh, sit here so you can see him? You don't have to. You're comfortable. Yeah. I'm taking breaks and going up the back. She looks very comfortable where she is. So I can't tell the Um, oh God, where was I? Uh, Uncharted. Let's talk about uh, right. Uncharted. This is an example of a game that uh, is all about the cinematic experience. Mm -hmm. It, it handholds you to it in a sense because it wants to guide you through a movie of sorts. Right. Like it, it's it's telling a story. Like yeah. uh, what's the, I think a good thing about Uncharted is you can turn off the hands. You can put it on extreme mode. Uh, Last of Us is another really good example of that. Being that if you go harder, harder extreme, you have an entirely new gameplay mechanic. Yeah. In the listen mode. Um, or the lack, the lack of the game, like game yeah. Academy, which really changes the game, which is kind of cool because you have two different playthroughs in a sense. That's good. I like that kind of stuff. You know, uh, I'm glad that they didn't just take that out entirely because the focus testing told them that people didn't like not being able to see where enemies are. They're like, well, this is the vision that we had, so we'll put it on hard and extreme right. and let the people that want to play it that way play it that way. Um, and it was a better game that way, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, you played it on Nova Sin as well, didn't you, Mark? Uh, Last of Us I'm talking about? Um, no, I didn't get that far. Okay. Right. I think it's a better game that way, and I think yeah. that's the vision that they had. Um, I don't think I would like it as much, though. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I just, I want I like the scarcity of the end. Yeah, I know. I felt like that fit in with what the world was supposed to be. Right. Um, but it, it's just, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Yeah, like, uh, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to think, like, okay, Demon's Souls and Dark Souls kind of started to think right now. Right. Um, they, and well, Devil May Cry has game. a great, a great way of doing it. Like at the beginning of Devil May Cry, you know, it's a, there's a lot of different battle mechanics and everything like that. And you're showing some of them, you know, you, you are held in the hands. But you know, some of them, it's kind of cool um, where you're running through this one area and you walk up to something and it kind of does like a little bubble. And if you remember, like uh, Super Mario World, where when you first, you know, you can hit the little, you know, raspberry fruit things, you know, and it tells you the hint. But if you don't need to hit. You don't have to hit it. Yeah. So that's actually a perfect way of doing it. Let me walk up to something. Let me get to something that will tell me quickly without stopping my gameplay. It's when it stops my gameplay that really pisses me off. You know, I'm trying to flow with it. it I saw work. Celtics fan uh, say that there needs to be a return to the glory days of like single player PS1 titles. And I, I completely agree with this. I've never been a multiplayer guy. I would love to go back to the days of just a single player focused story campaign with no multiplayer. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. We're already pretty much there in a way. Um, sometimes. One of the yeah. biggest issues that people are having with games right now is you went from having single player games, a lot of single player games like that what you're talking about, but a lot of games where you could do couch co-op, and now you have no games that you can do couch co-op. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Seriously, like, I can literally probably count all of them on my hands. Well, yeah, I mean it's gone towards online multiplayer, mm -hmm. and there's obviously a space for that. Um, but I, I think uh, you're seeing it's just a, diver a diverse market now, with right. especially that you you are seeing the returns of that kind of stuff. You are seeing these single player focused experiences. Uh, the Order is going to be one of them. That's not an uh, <laughs> right. indie title, but I'm, I'm happy to see that Naughty Dog and now. Uh, Sony, Ben, maybe possibly, and uh, uh, Ready and Dawn, who's working on the order, they're focusing on single player. They're trying to tell a story. Right. And a lot of people have a problem with that. Quantic Dream's another one. A lot of people have a problem with games trying to tell a story, but there, there's definitely a, an there's audience a for that. For I, I and listen, know. if you don't like that type of game, if it's, if it's one game and it's bad, we'll, we'll, we have no problem telling you saying it's a bad game. If you just don't like that genre, yeah. then just don't, you just don't play it. Yep. It's, we don't, they, it's not saying you don't have to play every game out there. You know, I'm sure there's a ton of people that don't play sports games and stuff like that. You know, you don't have to play every game me. You know, it's just that, you know, it's there and there's an audience. And I actually like stuff like that. Heavy Rain was one of the favorite.